Uh, og lad os prøve... Oh, Mm, yeah. So Ola Kroening is a Swiss multimedia artist and he's born in 19, uh, 19, 17 Schaffhausen and he's also a ZHDK alumni. He studied there from uh, 93 to 96 and he has lived in New York and worked for around 20 years. And his paintings, videos, installations, sculptures, photographs and performances deal with the collective Western picture of memory and his own imaginary world which he combines to form laconic commentaries on contemporary events. Groening's works have been shown internationally in numerous exhibitions and are represented in the collections of re-owned museums. Recent solo exhibitions have been dedicated to him at the Cus Sculpture Foundation Goodwood, Metro Pictures New York, the NWR Forum Düsseldorf, the Haifa Museum of Art, the Palais de Tokyo Paris and the Miko Museum für Gegenwartskurz in Zürich. With that short introduction, we hand over to Olaf, who will show us some more of his work. Thank you. Thank you all uh, for uh, joining and looking at me for an hour <laughs> in my studio. And um, yeah, uh, I, I talk, I, I just talk, uh, I think, a few minutes about my work and I will open the, my, my home page and go through my works a little bit but before I do uh, so this is a, a part of my studio I live upstate New York I moved here four years ago I was living uh, 16 years in, um, in Manhattan New York and um, it's it's beautiful I mean New York is a very great place for people uh, for younger younger people especially and I I guess I got I got a little bit too tired of it, and I'm enjoying it very much up here now. It's it's quiet, and as you can see, I'm surrounded of, of forests. In the back there, you can see some sculptures of mine. Um, mostly all the unsold pieces my gallery can cannot sell. They end up on my property, and I guess in a few years I will have a uh, Olaf Bruning's sculpture park up here. <laughs> I mean, you can even. Uh, I have some entrance fee for people who uh, can come to see it, probably not. But. Um, so yeah, I, I graduated 1996 from, from the school. Uh, in that time we called it Kunstgerbeschule. So, and since then I, I started to work with um, photography because that's what I studied, that was the main, the main focus. Uh, but then shortly after I started to do installations, I do, did um, sound installations, I did um, drawings, I started to do sculptures. I, um, I just expanded my vocabulary in, in many, many different mediums uh, because I, I always uh, thought and I, I still think today, uh, I want to I wanna talk about my life in this world I'm living in. and. This world is so fucking crazy and colorful, so I need more tools to talk about it. So I'm, I'm very happy that I can sometimes use uh, a drawing or sometimes do something more colorful as like a, a photograph with a lot of people or um, uh, making clay sculptures or whatever, whatever the demand uh, is, whatever I need to do in order to, to react to this world I'm living in and I think there's the world changing crazy um, as you can see now it, it, at these last few months uh, I change um, crazy biologically I'm getting an older older person I mean uh, when you see between 20 and 50 that is a big big um, change of, of mentality uh, a person can have and, and I think my work goes with is that tags along with the world and my biological uh, change. And um, I moved out of the city, as I said, now I'm up here, I started painting. I guess maybe 15 years ago, I wouldn't have the urge to paint because I was running around in the city nervous. I wanna be uh, right on the spotlight of things. You know, I wanna suck in this world so much I can and, and, and spit it out in my own language. And that, um, the painting maybe is a sign that I kind of 
I'm, I'm old, or, um, I don't mean that in now I'm not an old man, but I'm just, you know, not anymore uh, 22. So um, I, before I show you the paintings online, I want to talk a little bit about it because I've been the last 10 years at least, I, I tried to, um, to, to paint, but I would, I would fail really each time I tried it. I, I just couldn't do it. I sometimes sent it to my uh, gallery director in Metro Picture and she would just like agree with me, bad, not good, not good enough. <laughs> So I, I was I was I was always kind of frustrated about it because I liked the idea. I, I've been always kind of jealous of my painter friends who really only need uh, and I have these experiences. My drawings you need only a pen, a table, and a paper, and you can talk about this world. The same with painting, you need a white canvas, a brush, and colors, and you can you can talk immediately. And I always liked that idea. And uh, the last two years, I worked on a process um, where I found I found a good way for me to do paintings, and that's actually um, wood block prints. <coughs> so I do like huge wood blocks, and I carve very simple shapes in it. I paint it and I press it onto canvases. So there, the result is then very, very um kind of a primitive. Uh, Easy, easy paintings, colorful, and I think I found a way to 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 have really fun to do it. And maybe I I show you, and Elsa, you have to see that my screen, I guess, pops up. So I just go Safari. Is it? Do you guys see something or? Not yet. Do I have to do something? Uh, you have to push the green button. One second. Share screen, okay. All right, there we go. Okay. Now. You guys see it? Yes. Very okay, cool. Okay, so this, uh, I got a painting. So this is, is um, I had a show this year in Dubai in my gallery and I showed this seven or eight paintings. And the idea is that I use nature to talk about the future, the future problems we might have with nature, um, the, what would be the global warming. And I, it's really something I, I care deeply about. And of course, as an artist, I, I wanna talk about it in a, in a very um, colorful and distant way. And I don't wanna put the, my finger up and say like, you know, we have to do, I, I just, like my, my approach in my work, so I, I, I can talk about very heavy and, and um, depressive uh, topics, but they're always, in my case, light and have humor in it. And I hope these paintings, also these ch childlike um, way, for example, this one is called sea level, sea level rising. This one is called water, and the water gets kind of, uh, not so much water anymore. This one is just the sunset. The universe, not, not so much to do with global warming, but it's just the, the small human watching in the fastness of the, of the surroundings outside of the planet Earth. And this is called tree. So this is, this is for me a, definitely something I want to do in future more, and I have a, the guest house up here I'm renovating now and that will be my painting studio and then I, I'm getting serious. Um, a new work I did also, um, this one, there are stone animals and it's called Sad and Buried Animals. I showed them this year in uh, Mexico City at the art fair and the idea of these animals is, you know, it, it is kind of funny. I mean, we are one species on this on this planet living here, and there are uh, hundred thousand millions other other species, but they have actually nothing to say. They they um, in my case, they just look up and have like a, a sad mouse and, and wait practically of the big hammer coming uh, extinct, extincting them, uh, extinct, anyway, uh, them and. Um, 
it, it's a kind of funny because if you think about it, we as, as humans, um, a few millions in years in progress to, to become what we are now, like the last 200,000 years, maybe the Homo sapiens, the last few thousand years changing the world, the last hundred years changing the world, incredibly the last hundred years changing the world so much that we influence the climate, that uh, a lot of living creatures on the planet, not only us, will suffer under this, under this uh, change. And this work just talks about that, uh, the sad and world animals. Of course, they're not, they probably don't know what's going on. But, um, so this is a, they're all made out of different stones. Um, and, and yeah, and the, the photography is, is something I, it's a kind of my, my, my most, my closest medium since I studied, before I went to uh, art school, I was uh, learning an apprenticeship as a photographer in, in uh, Switzerland. So I studied more or less eight years photography, so that's kind of the background. And, and, and the photos, they, they give me a good chance to really talk about um, some, to have some ideas about this world in more colorful ways. Uh, this is a, a new one called uh, the pessimists, the old people in garbage bags. Um, or this one is called Black Hole in My Garden. That's like a year ago or something like that. Uh, scientists managed to make the, the first photo of a black hole, what I think was an incredible achievement of, of humankind, human beings. And uh, um, so I, I thought I, I will re reproduce it in my garden and try to make a beautiful black hole. And actually, uh, it, it, <laughs> it, uh, it looks better than the, the real black hole, actually. <laughs> it was also easy to photograph the real black hole. I, I mean, I, I do a lot of photographs, I guess no one really cares. I mean, this one is called Frog Experiment. It's kind of like a few hundred years ago, frogs been often used in, in, in science experience to like figure out electricity or, or other things. And now here is the dance between the lasers and all the technical equipment. And often my works, I, I when someone would ask me, what do they mean? Uh, I don't know. I, I know, I know why I'm doing that and what motivates me to do them. But then when I look now at that photo I, myself, I'm so confused that I am happy to look at it again. And this is for me a big motivation to actually produce works that I can look at the works um, always with new eyes and think like, really? What is that? What's going on? And maybe a new idea. And, um, uh, this one is called Virtual Reality is Coming. Maybe you guys remember a few years ago, they came, uh, probably you can still buy them, these cheap uh, cardboard masks where you can see uh, virtual reality with your phone. But I always thought it's so ridiculous. I mean, you have that high-tech machine and then you have a cardboard box to put it in. Uh, so I, I put them in the forest and put them wigs on and just kind of the future is coming frightening from the forest. Um, but this one would be also a new one about the, the global warming, save the climate. Mm. You don't know if they protest, if they celebrate, if they ignore it, if they make fun. So it's also one of these hybrid between, between works. Um, the Bosch fridge is also a new one. I was always fascinated with Hieronymus Bosch, um, the triptych, this, this uh, famous painting. And so this is a Bosch fridge. Bosch is also a label of a refrigerator. And so I combined it with these bananas I found in China, somewhere in the market. And it's, a, it's practically the iconography of like from the 1600 or I think whenever that painting was done from, from um, Bosch. Um, 
uh, and, and the new iconography of today, kind of like, uh, oh yeah, and then I put um, minions that would be the, the, the design of today. So I try to combine these two things in, in my fridge right now. Oops. And so to make it, to make it, uh, I go short, quick through like a lot of my work. So to, as you, when you have once like a very boring Sunday and it's raining, you feel free to go on my page and, and go through my works. Uh, so these, these are all the works from the last 20 years, more or less. And um, this one is a really, really early one uh, in, in Zurich I did 1999. And that's in the Landesmuseum, um, uh, behind the Landesmuseum. Uh, there was an afternoon, I remember, I would build up all this, this uh, thing myself. <laughs> I had no assistant, no one, and organize all the, the, the bus, the bicycles and stuff. And uh, all my friends came and I shot that, that photo. This is something, you know, when I'm like, when I'm older and I look back, at my work, I'm really, really happy. It's like a diary. It's like I can watch back, and I have so much good memories in all these these um, past works. Uh, my friend been involved mostly, and and that that makes me happy. Okay. Um, well, let's go quick to um, drawings. <clears throat> And whenever someone has a question, please feel free to um, to interrupt me uh, and uh, ask. So the, the drawings, as I said, they're really simple. I mean, I, I uh, this is actually the beauty of, of the drawings. I, I can really have one idea. Let's say I sit in the plane. After like a hundred times, I get asked this question. I, I can make a drawing and kind of put it down for me, like put it on a paper. And um, um, and this one, for example, it's, I mean, often like my simple thoughts I had uh, uh, here in an uh, opening in a gallery. So you can, as an artist, actually, you can make very dramatic works and you can pull your guts out and talk about the. Uh, the sadness of this world and be really serious, but you know, in an opening, most of the people they come to socialize and drink a glass of champagne, and uh, I don't blame anyone to doing so. But these are just like these kind of thoughts and ideas I I kind of am able to put down very easy in drawings. Um, also, for the drawings, I that's also like a, a a good, a good um, experience for me. I went twice with the, with the boat from uh, New York to England with the Queen Mary, uh, to be precise. Uh, I took the Queen Mary and went uh, for like six, six days, two times, and I was in my cabin and made, made a lot of those drawings. I, I was like a monk in a cabin, and then in the evening I would go out in the big entertain entertaining machine of that boat like uh, 3,000 people or customers and like 3,000 people work in the belly of the of the boat so that was kind of a really a good experience so that means I, I'm not I'm definitely an artist who is always obsessed with working I would not like in the evening sit behind my drawings and make drawings so I do that always in, in blocks of I have to focus maybe two or three weeks on the drawings and then I sit there and do it very intense and um, I, uh, I remember also one time I had to do a show uh, at Metro with drawings and I was at my studio in, in New York and I had a, a massage parlor in, uh, in Soho and it was really unfocused because I always would hear noise, people walking by. Above me was a, a restaurant with, um, uh, what did they had a uh, um, crab sandwich or something like that. So I would hear always the crab sandwich each 10 minutes, someone shouting crab sandwich. So I was very unfocused and a friend of mine who uh, is a shrink, he gave me some um, relaxing uh, drug, I forgot the name, Noxanax, but something about the kind of like 
makes you more focused on something for people with a short attention span. So I, I would take this peel and sit down and make drawings. And it was not good because then at one point I would just like see something on the wall and I would go there and, and paint the wall or, or do something completely else. It wasn't productive at all. Um, so I have to find all these ways to, to do my drawings. And the best is like I did on the boat when I'm really not disturbed of anything. Okay. Um, then the sculpture became also last uh, 10 years more important um, for me. I, this is, this is also something, you know, um, as an artist, it's, it's, it's a different experience. It's when you do a drawing, this is such a, a light medium and, and so um, it, it, you can crumble it together and put it in a garbage, but when you make a big metal sculpture, then it is there in front of you and you stand and look at it and uh, this is really a great experience too as an artist that you know that this artwork will be there in the next 10, 20, 30 years. Um, it's, it's a kind of, not that I care so much, but um, just it's another, it's another way to experience your talking as an artist. This one is probably the, the biggest outdoor sculpture I did called The Clouds. And um, we showed them with the public art fund and Metro Pictures at the uh, Central Park in New York. And now they are in England in a beautiful uh, setting with sheep and cows in the background. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. Then I do some marble sculptures. They're kind of human shape, but they also look like gravestones. And I thought it's funny to took that to take that really serious material and, and put some kind of like 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 my drawings, easy thoughts on. This is like speaks for our time at the moment. And, and um, most of my production, as you can see in my studio, I'm, a, I'm like a, a one-man show. I'm, I am, I'm not really, I, I don't even, I'm, I'm happy that I can go in the morning to my studio with my pajama on and, and just do uh, my work and that I don't have uh, many assistants around me. But when I do the, the metal work or the stone work, of course, I have then people I work with uh, all over the world, actually, I found some great people. I, I can I can do these projects together. So that makes me also lighter as an artist because, as you as you maybe know, as an artist, it's not guaranteed that you're always successful. I mean, an art career goes up and down with most of the artists, and I'm happy that I have a, a small footprint at my. At my um, Students that don't have to worry too much uh, about, for example, now in these times, a lot of my colleagues with bigger studios, I mean, they had they had to fire most of the people, and what is now is very sad <coughs> to do. And uh, well, this also is. Um, yeah, so you just caught me off when I talk too long. <laughs> you just caught me off when I'm. Extended my time. <laughs> I have no idea. Then, um, uh, uh, so this this is a a work I showed actually at the Mikros Museum two thousand and oh, I forgot when that was seven. So this is all handmade candles. It's called Oh Yes, It's a Garden. This work is unfortunately um, in darkness of a container since maybe 15 years uh, in, in uh, Copenhagen. Never saw the dark daylight again. So that happens sometimes too, that works just, you know, they disappear in storage and there's not such a big demand uh, after you made it. And 
Um, this is then the negative part to make big, big sculptures that you have to worry about that. I'm quickly going to interrupt you yeah. with a question. How was oh. that uh, showing at Micro Museum um, being from Switzerland and then coming back and then showing that? Yeah, you know, for me, you know, of course, it was a big, big honor, uh, and it would be still a big honor now for me when I would get invited of museums or, or a place in Switzerland, because that's where I'm from. And uh, when I was in art school, I would look up to these places. They've been, you know, like um, places I, I wished I could have a show or I'd be, be there. And, and of course, the, this was great. When I'm, I'm not quite sure if the Mikos Museum was probably not even existing when I was studying. And Raphael would know that better when the Mikos Museum started. But, but I, was, I was, of course, really, really honored and, and uh, happy to, be, to have a show there. And, and it was a kind of a small, a small retrospective. And this is also very nice as an artist to see many different works in, in one space. So I, I had a good time. I, it's a good, good experience. And maybe I have even a, I'm not sure if it's here in Migros Museum. The show at Migros was in 2007. 2007, right, here, yeah. You see, that was, I, that was the idea that uh, we decided that our, like, to make the whole exhibition stru structure with, with old crates. <laughs> It was quite funky, I mean, <laughs> but I, I liked it. It had, it had a charm. And um, see all my drawings been just over the crates and the photographs. And I, I, I always liked when my work is involved in, in some, some not that the kind of church-like white cube moment where you have just a white wall and, and you work on. And the decision to work with the boxes, um, because like thinking about the fact that you, you like you from Zurich, you moved to to the states, and then like showing in your home country again, it has something like related to to moving these boxes. I don't know, maybe it's just a link that we make because you're from Switzerland. But um, how do you see it? No, I, I I think the main reason was you know it's a huge museum, a lot of space, and I knew we would have to have so much walls built mm -hmm. and this and that. Or at that time, I, I, I thought and still think today when I have shows, it's ridiculous, you know, that waste of materials just to make a show, mm -hmm. uh, like from the artist's ego to do it like that. But, you know, and especially in 2007, but now, especially today, uh, 13 years later, we are, I guess, the whole world is more aware about these things. And uh, I, I still, for me in the future, I, I'm happy when I can be the impact, the kind of minimal in, in like, you know, having big shows and I would not be the artist that says, oh, I want to have like, you know, 10 walls built, like one there and there, 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 there. Mm -hmm. I would rather say, let's try to find a way to, to show the work in a, in a good way. I, I believe when the work is good, it can be like, you know, it can be uh, uh, shown on a toilet, it would still be good. <laughs> That's my belief, if I'm wrong. Um, but this, I remember that was the same time I started already with this, uh, I had an, in Miami the chance for the art fair to do a big sculpture. I had like a, a large budget to do it, but also there I didn't want to like, you know, produce something out of iron or plastic or, or whatever just for like five days. So I decided to do a um, sand sculpture. And that, as you can see after, after the, duration of the, of the exhibition, just a big uh, bulldozer came and made it. That. So that made me happy, you know, this is just something, um, and I guess here in this museum, they probably use the sand after that too. I mean, that's just sand. So that, um, yeah. And then you reproduce the work in Düsseldorf then? Like this, yes, because in Düsseldorf that was, um, 2016, I, I had also another retrospective in the 
NRV forum and, and there just we decided to do it and it's, it's always surprising because it's so much and it's uh, 20 tons mm -hmm. and um, it was it was great for 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 the show and um, maybe I have photos of that show uh, so here you see and and this this is also something what made me happy to do um to see like whatever I'm doing uh, drawings photographs sculptures. It, it fits somehow together, so that, that made me happy as an artist to see that you know finally the language is the is is the glue. The language an artist can have is the glue to, to bring stuff together, and um, I, I was was really happy and, and will be very happy in future if I have another retrospective somewhere. That's more works I create, better is the mix of things. Um, And you often use so not only the, f the female body, but like in general the human body. But I feel like in this case, like it's also like a kind of a nude, but very um, like humorist, like turned in humoristic way, and the face is gone. Like, what is your relation to to that? Like, why is that symbol of the woman body so often coming? Oh, well, you know that the thing is about uh, that's that's a. Uh, uh, a delicate question in these times we live in. Um, of course, I'm, I'm a man. I'm 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 interested in in. I, I'm sexually attracted to women, say like that. Uh, so for of course this was when I, when I think you know let, let me explain it like this. Um, when I. Um, I want to show the work. Okay, I have to say that um, uh, when I when I was making works like photographs and and I looked for models, um, I for me it was very close to choose a woman and, and not out of a sexual reason or anything, just because I like probably the woman body just better aesthetically, and uh, of course I think today. It's a different time, and maybe also like you know, only ten or fifteen years I was not so aware about that. You know that one could be sensitive about it, and uh, today maybe I wouldn't make a science culture with two big breasts. I would think twice about it because I I know now that this is a really sensitive topic. What I before maybe didn't realize um, that someone could could have get offended and and. Uh, so I think, you know, the language we talk and also my language as an artist changes with the time we live in. And I think we have to be sensitive for the time we live in and maybe then just don't use it anymore. It doesn't really matter. I can also do something else. And this, for example, is here a very good sample. It has nothing to do with um, this uh, thing. But uh, here, this photo I did 2000 and I was living in Switzerland, you know, and and really innocent and never ever crossed my mind that idea of black facing was not even a, a terminology I would know at the time and I would make this photo and for like you know maybe 10 years that photo was just an old photo but the last five years this photo often gets gets into um, critic and people talk about black facing and we cannot do it and, and all those things. And and there you see that the world the world changes around around us and, and so but my works are just what they what they mean, you know, but as I said, I'm I'm not an idiot. I'm not like, you know, I'm not um, I just go with the with the with the world and the, the sensitivity of the world and, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I learn my lesson in, in that way, kind of that I uh, but, but said then, I, uh, I have to really also say another thing, I mean, when I was living in New York City, I had my studio there, I had a lot of interns and uh, I've been looking for people to shoot these art freaks and, you know, the most of the people who get back to me been been all women, so there was, and I had a few men there, so there was a lot more, more, um, 
women want to be in, in the in the photographs. So I don't care, and if they I don't care, but as I said, I think that the woman body is just for me aesthetically to work with so much more nice as men if I was that penis hanging out somewhere and the balls you have to hide or whatever. So it's just nice. <laughs> anyway, from an aesthetic point of view. Well, I have a question for you regarding how you deal with critique. Um, as we see your work, and as we all know, it's very playful. Um, some critiques we might say, yeah, it's very childish. Maybe it's like just a fantasy of childhood, whatever. How do you deal with that? How do you cope with that? Did you manage to do a coping mechanism or you just ignore it? Or how do you deal with it? Well, you know, Raphael, I, I just, I mean, as an artist, mostly you have to learn to ignore things because I mean, the, the most important thing is that you, I guess, find a language you feel comfortable, uh, comfortable with. And the, the thing I always feel that, you know, when people think my, my work is just childish, then that might be right. But then, then also maybe they, they, I mean, most of them, most of my work, even it's childish, there's always some, some hidden, like, dark, dark uh, moments in it. Um, a work like this one second is coming up. Like there could be kind of childish and playful. It's called one of these days, those days. Uh, it, it talks about, it, it, it is, makes, makes it really, you laugh and you see it. And, but the, the idea is that I was think you can, okay, now that, that, that I want to say, this is a kind of a key of my work. Since the beginning, as an artist, I always want to be open for all the people, for kids, for uh, adults, for grandparents, for, uh, for all the people. Uh, I didn't want to, and a lot of artists do that, they do that in a very, uh, for me, from my perspective, uh, uh, from my perspective, kind of um, seclusive, arrogant way, they close the door, so they are really, really using art, but it's only uh, for people who have uh, uh, an art knowledge, who know, know the art history and who know this specific area that artist works in and that was never my cup of tea i really i was mostly even uh, um discussed discussed by these kind of works so i always want to open up and then when you speak about child like work i i know that like you know to understand things is often simpler you tell stories easier there to understand and but in my way i always want to open the doors and then let people in but when you're inside then you can still decide oh do i want to think now in, in case of that photograph about uh you know the, about the depressive part of life and all stuff falls apart or or do i just want to look at it and, and laugh i mean this is a choice i don't know in, in my point of view i rather approach someone with a light way and with a humoristic way than like the opposite of like kind of you have to see this and that you know this this is just my my way how i think i want to talk about about things but um i don't know if that answers sure, it's all very interesting i was also wondering do you see for yourself like a different way of reading your work in the us than in europe i mean what maybe also you could elaborate a bit why you moved to new york or to the us um, was that maybe a part of it because in the us the relationship of high and pop culture is not as strong as maybe in europe do you think people read your work very differently in these two continents um yeah it's it's fine <laughs> It's difficult to say. I mean, look, like I mean, I, the last twenty years I show my work, my, my work all over the world, and I had always one one thing in common. I feel people who like my work, they they get a because it's it's accessible, so people in Japan could enjoy it. People in in Australia can enjoy it. So this is the kind of a, I felt always I have easy access to people with my work. Now Switzerland and the United States. I mean, I I got to New York because I got them. Um, the scholarship from the city of Zurich for one year uh, a studio in New York City and um, 
I, I, I've been there as a Swiss person growing and so up in Switzerland. I mean, Switzerland is a very protected place. And, and the, I grew up in a, in a really luxury, uh, luxury surrounding. And I was really happy to be in New York because as you said, there's this kind of contrast of poor and rich of, of you know, um, so, so many different things. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Got the coffee. Um, so, ma so many different things. And then I came to New York as a Swiss, young Swiss person. And I think for me, it was an explosion, you know, like flirting with all the Hollywood movies. What kind of like I saw the reality there. I, I saw a rap culture in front of my eyes. I, I saw many things I would not see in Switzerland. And that def definitely influenced my work a lot in that time. And since I've been gone from this and I cannot really see, say how Swiss people would be my work, but um, definitely have a big influence to, to go to New York. Yeah. Um, maybe to break out of that. <laughs> how, uh, how did New York change during the time you're there? Um, but when I came there, I think I came right, right before 11 September, you know, I mean, after that it changed the kind of drastically and, and, but then still it was a place where there have been a lot of creative people, um, a very vivid place and just to change the last few years, what I noticed is just that New York became a lot more commercial. Um, also because the, the rents just incredibly expensive. So you have, it, it's more difficult as like a young creative person to be in the city. So that definitely changed, you know, like the, the small stores closed, you see like just big corporate stores like drug stores. And so it, it, it definitely changed a little bit. But at the end of the day, I think New York is, is New York. There's still a magnet for a lot of, lot of, Uh, people between 20 and, and 40 coming to New York to, to um, put the pedal to the metal. I think that probably did not change. Olaf, I would also like to ask you a question because um, you are very good in storytelling, as we see. Uh, how did you decide to become a visual artist, not like commercial photographer, since you came from photography? Because you would have been probably also become a very successful commercial photographer. So what, where, where was the point where you said, oh, I want to go into the fine arts and not into the passion or advertisement? Uh, well, you know, it was never a question for me because I always, since 16, I worked on my whole work that's important. And, then, and I think to be an artist, there's one good thing about it. You, you rarely have compromises. So you have no one, when you're a commercial photographer, you have like a creative director, you have like a customer, you have many things you have to um, cope with. When you're an artist, I really can go each morning to my student and say, so what do I do today? I have no one telling me what to do. And this is such a, um, a this was such a reason to choose to be an artist. And I still enjoy that today to be an artist. Then what happened the last 15 years, I got often involved in, in commercial, stuff so when there is a good commercial opportunity uh, and i like to do it uh, at the moment i work I, i i did a few windows for earners I, i like to do this um you know when, when a commercial entity comes and they want my language then i'm happy to do it but i'm really happy i'm not a commercial a photographer but who knows maybe one day I don't sell my art anymore, and then I have to do it. <laughs> and um, since we are talking to the students, um, do you have any advice what to do when they finish their studies? Because that's also always a question, so what do people do when they finish their studies? And there's this kind of emptiness of um, letting it go and going and making decisions. Yeah. Well, you know, I thought for me, it took also two, three years, but was, was short, it was a short time. I was lucky to be, to be um, picked up uh, uh, in the art market early. But when you see today, some students, especially in New York, they get picked out of the art school from galleries and they very aggressively, they look for young people. And I still believe it's really, really good after school to 
work for like a few years just to get away from school, <laughs> like to get that the kind of, you know, because in school you, you're pampered by, by your teachers and by your classmates, you talk non about your work, you have that discussion and this is then later in your artist life, not really there anymore, you sit in your studio and you, you can talk with your friends about it, but it's not, you don't have someone looking over your work. And I think that has to be learned for a few years to get, to get used to that moment of being an artist where it can be sometimes really frustrating sitting in the studio not getting you know kind of and that this is maybe one of the biggest art being an artist to to be able to go through bad and good times with your work and um, but what i would say is that just not to stop working 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 this is really important and when you stop working, it's also okay. You know, I think when you to be an artist, is you have to go with the flow. You cannot push it. Mm. I mean, you can push it, but no. It's accelerating because you, like in some interview, you say that you you work mostly with your stomach and not with your brain or with the like concept. So I feel like it's also very connected to what you say right now because you're like you're not trying to kind of read things or to kind of uh, like put things together in order to make it work, but you just kind of trust that it's coming somehow. Like and you, you're gonna feel it all. <laughs> no, no, but it, it, for me it's very really simple. I'm, I'm in that way a simple thing. I mean, I I um I think about this world in a, in for my own brain in a, in a more complex way, like we all do. You know, we reflect this world we live in with our thoughts. When I do a work, for me, it was always important. I want to find the snowball, a very small snowball, simple snowball, really a simple thought about this life. What I know, when I use it to create an artwork, it might, um, it, it might um, create an avalanche of, mm -hmm. of messages. So for me, it's then, you know, I have an idea. I say, I want to put ears on the Easter, uh, the Moais in Easter Island. I fly like the Easter Island and do that. And simple idea. But then you can actually talk about this photo in, in many different levels. And then so many people see different stories in it, historical uh, um, backgrounds, um, like, you know, uh, connecting it with this and that. And, and that enriches from your work. It's like a battery, it fills up with content. So in other words, I'm happy to create like something what is filled up by people with content. And uh, what has my origin, small snowball, is my private idea. You know, I, I could also write a diary and put it under my pillow. But unfortunately, I'm being attracted to visual products. So I want to produce visual products. And, um, but, um, yeah, that's, it, I, I'm, I, I try to, you know, would I, would I be, my language skills are not that good. I, um, I would love to write a book, but I, I can't, this is something I, but I can tell stories visually that, that I know I, that's my, my way to, to express myself. And visually, it's a lot more complex and not so linear language than, uh, than a written language. Uh, so I count on this kind of confusing visual codes you can put together whenever you want. And I, I want to make it confuse so much I can and, and just producing where people can talk about it. It's all like that. And, um, Yeah, so. Um, Olaf, we have, uh, we have a question on the chat. Can you see it or from the audience? Um, um, Raluca Manaila. I can not see it because I have the screen. Can you read it for me? Um, Raluca Manaila writes, I really like the last questions. I completely agree. I saw two sculptures before. Allah is great and drone attack. They are approachable, but still gritty. And people from Germany will see them for sure different late than people from the US. Do you count those two in the topic of all over work sadness? Because they are pretty explicit politically. Thank you. 
okay, now <laughs> can you can you <laughs> sorry it was was a uh, uh, so can you make it a, a short question? Um, if you, uh, <laughs> the the, the works which involve uh, somehow political topics um, they can be seen in a different context in a different way. Um, do you think is this um, about word sadness these topics or how do you why do you approach such topics? No, why why do I approach such topics? Because I'm not I'm not, I'm not like you know sitting here like a potato and looking this world and just ignore political uh, things. Of course, I'm moved by. By, uh, I'm disgusted by Donald Trump. I'm moved by the, the future the global warming in a, in, a, in a great way. I'm like, you know, I, but I would not, I, I think, you know, that there, there are many artists, they, they maybe talk about it more in a journalistic way. They would like go and, and talk about something really precise about like, um, I don't know, um, social surveillance, surveillance or, and then they make a show really focused on that. And, and, it's a political um, statement about it and you can say that's a kind of a political approach to talk about things but in my case i really want to keep that playfulness in in my thoughts and have for example i'll show you a good example i mean with, with, a, with a work like this i would cross many borders it, it's political could be uh, on, on correct. It, 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 it talks about many issues we have. We first wrote um, um, people have with the third world, and 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 you know a, a photo like this. And this this is also a photo. Each time I look at it, it it opens up so many questions. And I this is my way more like to approach. Um, I can say. What I want to say, what I want to answer is to these questions. I, I, I want to talk about stuff, mm -hmm. and and but I don't want to talk about it as as a journalist does or or someone who really does it in a in a more. Yeah, I, I want to leave it all. I just want to talk about it so that I talked about it, and I want to talk about many things about things. I just want to talk and. I, that's not a good answer, sorry. <laughs> Maybe but I can pick up one more th time. You, you said before an artwork or your artworks also function as some sort of battery that there is like, that they also take in opinions, um, critiques and so on from other people. I think that's quite a nice image for me. Um, how do you... Do, do you read about your work? If I, as an art historian, would write a text, how do you, do you ever take um, control over it? Do you correct texts about your work, for example? Or you no. just say like, okay, I let it grow. I don't care about that. No, I, I, so far, you know what, so far I had never the sense it. So far I never thought someone would write something what is kind of, bad for me or or and I'm really really uh really happy to to read something I would never thought you know I that again that enriches for me the the, um, the work. So when I someone or someone at, at, at in a show someone comes to me and, and tells me a story what this person sees in my work, this is for me very uh, cherished this these moments. That's that's great. You know I I am um, and as I said before, for me the same, looking now at this photograph, this $20 bill, it's a long time I did not look at that photo. My thoughts probably now are different than five years ago. Uh, and the same about what we talked about the woman body before. I mean, this this is all like I feel my work should be for me like um, an always vibrating moment of, I think, in other words, when an artwork for me is, is written in stone for me kind of a dead artwork. I, I personally like artworks with this openness of interpretation and, and um, but this is really personal. I mean uh, I would not write the manifest about that. Um, um, love, we are approaching the time so I would open the forum for maybe yeah. one more last question from the audience or from the students from the course. Anyone? or comments on the talk. We have 
Nico Sebastian. Why couldn't you or didn't you want to leave the sand sculpture to erosion? Why the bulldozer? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, maybe you should call it the Miami Beach. Beach. Uh, uh, I don't know how they call them. Of course, you know that this is very like we had to remove it. <laughs> but also it's great because it really arose beautifully. It was like just lost the shape and uh, and probably kids would be happy to go on that mountain of sand. But of course it's in Miami Beach, it's all regulated and uh, all the liability. Uh, Somebody could have been killed by Olaf uh, Bruning sculpture. <laughs> 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 you, someone would have to be really uh, do an incredible stunt on it, <laughs> on that sense. But, uh, you know that. Um, yeah, but I, I've been in Miami last year, and I've been walking over the, the area, and I thought, yeah, that's that's maybe still a little bit of my sculpture there, <laughs> between all the sun, sun cream and and whatever you have to have on that side. <laughs> okay. Well, then um, one more. Um, con Katarina Shedi, have you ever felt that your multidisciplinarity is being critically reviewed? Uh, critically reviewed in what way? Um, I probably, like the, probably you know, didn't focus on one media and maybe people got confused about the variety of your oeuvre and not, you know, sometimes it's easier to be a painter and paint in the same style. I guess this is what the question is. Yes, yes. No, of course, I mean, as an artist, I, I feel kind of, you know, it, it's definitely a more difficult approach. Uh, a lot of artists, they're like kind of very good one-trick ponies. They do one thing for a long time and repeat it, and they get recognized easier when they do always the same thing. And uh, for me, it's confusing. I probably confuse a lot of people because now I start painting and, and but as I said with my show I had like um, uh, in, in Germany it's believed that today my language brings stuff together and, and I, I I think um, I don't care what people or if someone doesn't like it I as I said in the beginning the world is a colorful place and I try to to use so many tools as possible to, to talk about it and that makes me happy. I don't care what people really think. I mean, I don't care what they, they think, uh, but you know, it's it's my my language. Yeah, and that was a very nice last sentence. Uh, the word is a colorful <laughs> word, and we should not care about the others when we work as artists. And that's, that's also what Olaf said. It's kind of the beauty of the job that we kind of have the freedom. We often have to tell students there are rules in the school, but whatever you do in your artwork, you're free. <laughs> so um, <laughs> um, follow, follow this, uh, but and yeah, you, you will be, I guess, happy. Um, I would like to say thank you very much, Olaf. We hope to see you in the fall, <laughs> not thank only on the you. Zoom, but hopefully also in a physical way. And um, yeah, thank you to the students who prepared the introduction and to everybody who joined us today. And we hope you will join us tomorrow again. We will um, talk to Judith Bernstein together with Raphael mm -hmm. and some other students who prepared the introduction. And um, yeah, have a nice day and hope to see you. Thank you, thank you, Roger. Thank you, thank you all of, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. So thank you. Bye. Bye.